against this right back, Charlie. Oh, no, it's the oh, 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 People deluded, I'm back yeah. again. Come on, Ian. <laughs> As the big man Ian Wright said there, people deluded, I'm back again. I hope everyone's doing well and safe. I hope you're all blessed and all of those things. Feels like we haven't done this forever, if I'm completely honest with you guys, man. It feels like we've been missing. Now, the international break is over, which is obviously fantastic news to us Arsenal fans. It gets even better because we have a potential title decider against Manchester City tomorrow, which we will be doing a watch along for, folks. So, yeah. I want to kind of put cold water on that. I don't want to play it down because I think it's a big opportunity to show that we can sit at this table and compete at this table. I obviously would like us to end our hoodoo at the Etihad. It's not a happy travelling ground for us. And we just need to really show we've, we're competing. And obviously, we had a good season last year. It did not end in the fashion we'd have loved to, um, to have done. So it'd be nice to show that we can compete against Manchester City again because we've beaten them in the last two games. The last time we did the double over them was actually in 07 08 so I'd love to win now if we do win which of course I want I'm ecstatic I'm gassed it does feel like the stars are aligning but then you've got to go and beat Luton midweek and you know you'd imagine it's going to take a lot of energy against Manchester City and then there's a short turnaround then you've got the Brightons the Spurs the Man United etc so we literally need to take every game as it comes I mean if we do beat Manchester City tomorrow and I'm sure you all would have seen Bayern Munich losing to Borussia Dortmund I believe it feels like your silverware could arrive at the Emirates, but yeah, man, feels like forever, broski. I kind of missed you. I missed you a lot now, man. Again, normal services resumed tomorrow. We're doing a watch along. I am in the process of putting together like a fan show after the watch along. So we'll obviously talk about the falling points, regardless of what happens with Man City. Obviously, Monday, uh, I should have the different knock. Alex, pick him up because he's at 60,000. Go subscribe if you haven't. Uh, so yeah, and then Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, salute. And so yeah, we're back, man. We're back. And I have to apologize to all of you lot. I've been trying to do the editing thing, but I also have to apologise to the Twitch gang because I miss you lot. So, yeah, man, again, I just want to not get too excited with the game. Of course, I want to beat Man City, but I'd take a point. Four points off City and Liverpool, two potential, well, two title contenders. That's big news for me. I don't think Martinelli is in the squad tomorrow. I don't know, man, because Arteta has learned from Arsene Wenger and obviously Pep Guardiola, and and he's obviously got a bit of himself in that. In that, you know, he's played mind games before. Ironically, I go back to the when we played Man City at the Emirates. He was talking like Saka was going to be involved. Saka was going to be involved, and then you saw what happened, really. So I think Arteta and Pep they're doing mind games. On one hand, I don't think Martinelli's there. I think Saka would be all right. Big Gabriel would be all right. I think it's probably come too soon for Martinelli, but I don't know. I don't care what Pep Guardiola has to say in relation to Kyle Walker, John Stones, and any of the injured players. Um, you know, them being out means little to me. Of course, it makes me more excited, but. When we beat Liverpool and we beat Man City, did we win those games with necessarily the strongest team that Arsenal fans would put down on paper? So we can't, you know, while it gives us an opportunity to even more, it, you know, we can't draw too many conclusions. And, you know, you've got Rodri and Kevin De Bruyne back. I know a lot of the talking points was about Rodri going into the Emirates game, if I can remember correctly. And Rodri's the best player in that position in the world, in my opinion. Obviously, we're going to say Declan Rice, but we know it's Rodri. They miss Kevin De Bruyne. Now, Saliba and Gabriel have kept Haaland quiet, but Haaland missed him. You know, there has to be a link with they ain't got their magic magic man in the middle of the park and Haaland not scoring. And our record against City is woeful. Our record against uh, Kevin De Bruyne is woeful. So we're going to have to get on with it, if I'm completely honest with you. Take every game as it comes, that's what we can do. Exactly. At the end of the day, 
if we handle our business on paper, then we've got nothing to worry about. But we are allegedly, because I don't look at the league table, top on goal difference. In relation to injury news and Pep Guardiola, Pep Guardiola, Mikel Arteta's uh, press conference, we might as well assess it, people, really and truly, and see what's been said. Uh, apparently, you know, our Brazilian centre-back, Big Gabriel, was forced to miss his country's friendlies against England and Spain during the international window after pulling out of the Brazil squad. We know that. We also know Saka did the same. We also know Martinelli had injuries going into the international break and was also ruled out. Uh, when pressed on whether the trio would be fit for the trip to the Etihad Stadium on Sunday, Mikel admitted he's leaving it until the last possible moment to make the call. You would imagine there was a training session today on Saturday or Friday, and if they haven't travelled on that coach, then they're spectators for the game. There's a chance they haven't trained, but tomorrow we have another session, so there's a chance they can be available now. Obviously, his press conference was done on Friday. It's currently Saturday, so... They know what's going on already. You know, Tommy Asu and uh, Thomas Partey have obviously played against QPR and behind closed doors friendlies, which is good. Timber's on the recovery. But I don't, as much as these players are quality, I don't think anyone's betting too much on them. Again, we might as well see exactly what Mikel Arteta has had to say. If you haven't smashed the like button, you know what you need to do. We've gone over that already. On the international break, potentially coming at a bad time. You can't do anything about it. That moment is gone. They had to go to their national teams and we have maximised as much as we possibly could during the time we had here with certain players. Now everybody's back and so positive about what is coming and looking forward to it. On belief if we can beat City following doing it in October. We had some clashes as well in the FA Cup and Community Shields and it's all great experiences. They've raised the bar in this league and I think in football in general too, to a level that hasn't been seen before. That's the beauty of sport. It makes you better and challenges you more. You have to keep up with that pace. That's what we're trying to do. I don't think anyone disagrees on if it feels if things feel differently than when we faced um, them at the Etihad. And let me know your thoughts. I'd say yes and no, because last season there was title stuff. This season, I would say it's title stuff. But I do think, obviously, hindsight's a wonderful thing. You know, you make better choices with making mistakes. Last year, I think psychologically, we struggled to cope with the running. Obviously, we had no Saliba. And I don't really feel there was genuine belief that we could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with City at the Etihad. This time, I think, you know, we have to be wary of City. They've got a generational manager, wonderful players, won the treble. Pep's crazy in games. As much as I think it's a good chess match between two tactical masterminds, Pep has shown one game that stands out for me is actually, can't remember the year, but he moved Bernardo Silva from left back into midfield. So it is going to be an interesting one. But I do think there's a lot more reasons to be confident because, you know, City, you look at our records against City nine times out of ten, it's not nice reading for Arsenal fans. And I ain't got a number to hand, but it feels like, you know, City battered us nine times out of ten. They've still been winning the majority of the games, but... They just they were just battering us. Now it's become a thing where, yeah, when they've won, it's been more close. Like there's been fine margins that have gone for us or against us, or they've exploited certain shortcomings. So I think we're a bit more experienced, we're a bit more rounded. Obviously, this is our second time fighting for a title, quote unquote. So I think there's a bit of healthiness that we've earned the right to be here. Obviously, I think the Dubai trip and the fallout with our form has given us a lot. And I just think the players know that, you know, the season's on the line. You know, generally from August, we've been great. We hit a bump at the end of the year. And then obviously it is what it is now. And that's the frustrating thing about us, man, because ironic, even you can't read too much into it. And it speaks volumes of how City are still achieving what they're doing. But there's actually a massive contrast between the top six games. We've done typically quite well, with the exception of Spurs and Chelsea this season, where we shot ourselves in the foot. I think City have only beating Manchester United out of the traditional top six, which isn't the most impressive of, of victories, not to belittle them based on United's form. So I think there's every reason to be optimistic, believe we can, we can, you know, our form as well, believe we can give them a game. And I don't feel, I said this last year, to be honest, obviously Saliba's fit. It feels like, it just feels like if we don't win at the Etihad this season, I don't think, I don't know when we next will win. For me as an Arsenal fan, if we want to win this league, then we have to battle our demons. You can only look ahead of what's in front of you. But, you know, Brighton's a difficult place to go to. Historically, you know, like I've seen my team win a league title at White Hart Lane. In recent years, it's not been a good travelling place. Old Trafford is still terrible for us. And obviously, we're talking about the Etihad game. So we're going to need to stand up to be counted, man. It should feel a bit different, 100%. But at the end of the day, 
We're gonna, we know it a bit like when we won at the Emirates, we're gonna have to match them, win our individual battles. There are gonna be moments you have to suffer, but when you get an opportunity, take it. You know, you look at when Arteta made the subs, maybe even David Raya pinged the ball to Partey, but I can just remember Partey hitting it to Tomiyasu, Tomiyasu to Havertz. Obviously, Havertz set into the path of Martinelli, who bagged with the help of a deflection, but you make your own luck. If you haven't smashed the like button, shout out Mafia Boss, as the man said, do exactly that. So it should feel different, but the gaffer said, it's different. Momentum is different. We had certain results and some big injuries in that moment, but those experiences are there to learn from. Sometimes we have to clap to the opponent when they are better than you, and that was the case on the day. Learn from it and challenge yourself to be better. And I don't think you're wrong, but I honestly believe in my heart at the game at the Etihad last year, regardless of holding against Harlan and where it went right and where it went wrong, I think, and I'm not a psychologist, I don't know about body language, but it looked like the game was one and lost in the tunnel. And that's something we've been able to, in a positive sense, do this year. So let's get with it, man. It can't be a nice feeling, really, you know. Again, anyone that's played Sunday League, every time you play a team historically that you know you're going to lose to, it is a bit demoralising. At some point, the bullies need to, the, the people being bullied need to stand up to be counted. So fair enough, Arteta, man. I don't think you're wrong there. Of course, he's going to have nothing but admiration for Pep Guardiola. We don't need to read all of it with the greatest of respect. Uh, obviously, Benjamin White didn't travel with England. He said, I think he has received a lot of love and you just have to see what his teammates and everyone in the football in football, sorry, think of him, especially the ones that have been close to him. I think people have respected his decision and hopefully one day he's prepared to rep his country in the best possible way, but that's completely up to him. So yeah, Declan Rice has also said that. I mean, Ben's, Ben's made his decision. It is what it is and it is a question for him. On what he took from the City game last season, psychologically, we need to react to setbacks, which I think we've done. And to go back, I would say one annoying thing is, yeah, Football's a weird game. You can never write off anybody. And, you know, across the season, you're not always going to be at it. Sometimes you're going to play well and lose. Sometimes you're going to play terrible and get three points. But for me personally, we shot ourselves in the foot in the stupid games, if I'm honest, you know, respectfully to Fulham, just based on how they've been since that, which is up and down. That was a game. Newcastle, we should have scored. West Ham, probably the game where I've been the most bewildered as to how we haven't got three points. And I'm sure there's a lot of others that you lot could add people on having beaten one of the best teams in the world this season. That's great, but it's a competition and it's the same with Liverpool. They have earned the right for everyone to look at them as an example because of what they have done has been phenomenal. To do this in this league and to do it consistently like they have done, I think it's helped raise our level and our demands to try to be like them and beat them. On being in another exciting title race, I was just watching everybody walk back into the building and I love the energy. I love the smiles. They were glad to be back. They actually wanted to train yesterday. The way they communicate and relay with each other is phenomenal. We have to embrace the moment. We need to go day by day, train really well and prepare for every match and see where this takes us. We've done a lot already to be in this position that we are in and now we have to embrace and enjoy the moment and go for it. Start Martinelli before Trossard. It's a techie one because I think, you know, Martinelli hasn't been exciting, like playing great like last season. But one thing I like about Martinelli, and I think everyone's got a great mentality in this team. I don't think you can question anyone. But Martinelli's just with it, man. Like, he's just with it. And I've seen that from Saka as well. But right now it's rosy. Respectfully to our to our tech, our, our byproduct has... Of, of what we're seeing now is we're doing the right things. Everyone can be can stand up to be counted. If you're feeling a bit nervous, you look at Saliba, you look at Declan Rice, you're going to feed off those energies. But that wasn't always the case. Arsenal fans, you remember, there was a time when only two, three players looked like they were with it. And I think at the time, Martinelli was. And I think he relishes the big games. You know, Liverpool is always up for it. And he did his thing in that game. Obviously, in the game against City, he scored and whatnot. So I would be tempted, especially if there is no Walker or if Walker isn't 100% fit, bearing in mind we don't know what plan Pep has for that and, you know, who is going to play right back or what he's going to do in that area. Trossard, I mean, he saved us at Wembley, really, so he could. I'm not going to lie, for me personally, I will go. I think Kai Havertz needs to play, especially where you look at Rodri's positioning in terms of playing out from the back and what Kevin De Bruyne is going to do in the pockets. I think the fact that Havertz will drop deep, he'll make fouls, he'll get into it, he'll do all that Kai Havertz stuff that he's been doing. I will go with Havertz up front. Obviously, his form's been great as well. Saka, I need to see something, and you are the most dangerous player, really, and truly in the final third base based on statistics. So I'm going to need you. I'd bet on Gabriel Jesus. At the end of the day, I know you're not fully fit and all this jazz, but. 
You've got a wealth of experience. You've achieved what a lot of our footballers hope to achieve. You're playing your former team. Whatever you have to say about the likes of Jorginho, Thomas Partey, Gabriel Jesus, Zinchenko, to a degree, Declan Rice, we bought you lot for these sort of moments, especially focusing on a Jorginho and more so Zinchenko, Jesus, because you lot have been in these moments, won big trophies, etc., etc. And I just think Jesus will have a point to prove. I'm not saying to play Zinchenko, Tommy Asu, Partey, Jesus. You lot on form don't deserve to walk back in the team. So if you get another chance tomorrow, maybe that gasses you a bit more. I'm happy with whoever starts. But if you're asking me personally, I'm going to go with Raya up front. Man said Raya up front. That's crazy. I thought Mikel Arteta was in a, in, innovative. Uh, Raya in goal. Obviously, Gabriel and Saliba. Benjamin White, non-brainer non, non there, really. Uh... Kiri, mm, you know, let's come back to left back. So I said Raya, Gabriel, Saliba, White in midfield. For me, I'm going to, I would typically say Partey, but with everything in consideration, I think this is a game for Jorginho. I'm going Jorginho, Declan Rice, obviously Martin Odegaard. I've just said it there with Saka, uh, Havertz and Gabriel Jesus as my front three. Left back, I'm going with Kirill because I think he's earned it. I think he's in a good moment. He's in a good form. He's doing what he's doing. You know, in many ways, I'm nervous for everyone because we're playing some great attackers, but at some point, Kirill probably didn't expect to play in a game like this and he might be confident. I'm just scared for Kirill when he gets pulled into wide areas, really. Even when you look at the Porto game, one thing I think isn't spoken about enough, take nothing away from Kirill because he bossed it, is mainly to praise Arteta. If you go and watch that first half, when they the rare times they were attacking, Trossard's almost filling in like a left-back and Kirill's a third a third centre-half. Uh, I, naturally, I would say Tommy Asu, but Tommy Asu is a bit like, he's one of them players... When he comes back from injury to me, you can't just get... And, and it's difficult for anyone, but you can't just get injured, come back in the team, and it's like you've never left. He, look, he kind of strikes me as a player that needs a bit of a run. But it's an important one. Whoever starts again, it's a game for Pep Guardiola and also Mikel Arteta to prove their worth in terms of the subs, man. You know, again, at the Emirates, the subs made the difference. Smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't. Is Timber not available? I thought he was back. He's obviously in, term, in his rehab, really. We hope to see him before the end of the season, but I urge calmness. Big up yourself, Steve. We must forget about our way record to City. I think we'll beat City 2-1, just hoping we have injured players back. And when we buy Victor Goya Keres, we'll be unstoppable next season. Shout out yourself, Steve. In, re in relation to Victor, I, I hear you. I'd love a striker, but at this moment, we have to deal with what's in front of us. And you are right. Like I, I slightly disagree in that. We shouldn't forget it, but that should drive us, really. And you're right, to a degree, you should forget it. At the end of the day, a lot of them results weren't achieved with the players that are here. Prove that it's a no look a new look Arsenal, sorry. And I don't want to go too far, but I want to, I'm a bit impatient, but I want to get into that realm now where we beat City. It's not exciting in a good way. Like historically, Liverpool, if Liverpool, like if Liverpool played City tomorrow and they win, they're not really going to make as much noise about it in the papers and that as much as they would if it was Arsenal. It's not that much of a shock, not that the tabloids like us. Um, but you get the point, isn't it? But psh, we need to earn that right, really and truly. It doesn't come overnight. So, yeah, man, he obviously bigged up Pep Guardiola. He's take, he said we've got confidence. He said, I have full belief and trust in my players and what we're trying to do. It's something that we have to show on the pitch. Outside is very easy to talk. Amen. Amen. I'm fighting for titles with Pep Guardiola. Probably I'd prefer to do it against someone else. I don't have those feelings, but it's not the choice. And it is what it is. That's it. People want to win. We know each other very well and we'll prepare the game to win it. On if he got him anything for his birthday. No, he didn't. Harsh, man. Very, very harsh. So, yeah, he's kept big enough. He's, they've asked him about the Benjamin White stuff again. He's bigged up Pep Guardiola. Uh, on the secret of our away form, the secret I don't know is probably that we try to play the same way away that we do at home and have that belief and aggression in our play. We have to play every team twice. We know the fixtures that we have, but I'm looking forward to it. On how he's convinced the players that they're able to win away from home, which I think, what, 17 goals recently away from home? Conceded like two. So that's a, that should give us confidence. Do I think we're keeping a clean sheet tomorrow? No. But we'd have to see. I don't want to see like Eddie, Nelson, Zinni, Smith run unless we're winning the game already and the team is ish. Can't trust these guys to make the difference. Bit harsh. At the end of the day, it's a squad game and we're going to need everyone to stand up to be counted. And I'm not suggesting that Eddie and Ketty is their bee's knees and the best thing since sliced bread. And I don't think he's someone that really should play on con on a consistent basis, but you need a squad. You know, one of our results of the season last year, amongst everything, was how we played at, at, at uh, in the North London derby. 
Eddie and Ketty had a very good game about uh, against Romero, which whether you rate Romero or not is another thing, but that's a World Cup winning centre half. Eddie and Ketty, did he not start up front against obviously against against City? Actually, going back to my point earlier about we went there without our strongest team. You had Jesus on the flanks who did quite well. You had Eddie up there, so I think that's a bit harsh. We're going to need the squad if I'm honest. You know, I must admit out the names you said there don't really. Want to see Zinchenko out there? It depends on the game state. If it's one where it's a bit even and as much as we do this inverted stuff, we need traditional defending. Then obviously they know, they arguably know Zinchenko better than Mikel Arteta does because Pep used to work with him for a longer basis. But yeah, man, we need the squad. We need the squad. It would have been nice to play City earlier because our momentum, but it is what it is, people. Um, on if playing after the international break impacts the quality of the game. A great question. I don't know. Hopefully from our side, no. Hopefully we can maintain what we're doing and be at our best. True. Um, obviously, he's asked about the fixture calendar list. He's not going to speak too much on that. On what we need to change to perform better towards the end of the season this year. And the last two years have been disappointing how they've ended. I do think that, God forbid, but this last run, if it was to go pear shape, obviously we would look at this at the end of the year, but I would still urge looking at that December period. But our last two seasons, when we were fighting for top forward Spurs, obviously last year, we crumbled. Hopefully it's third time lucky. It's a lot of DLs. There are specific moments like you're at Anfield 2 nil up and have the momentum to go on and win the game, but you don't. You end up drawing the West Ham game in the same position. You can still win it and you miss a penalty. Pick up Saka, man. My guy. But yeah, you missed one that game. Those two games and the third one comes with Southampton where we should have clearly won the game and there were many factors that didn't allow us. We got the injuries, the sporting game, there was a lot happening and then that momentum was shifted to a more negative momentum. We're struggling to keep up with City because they kept winning. They won 14 or 15 games in a row and they managed to do it. Um, on the importance of the game on Sunday, it's a massive game for both teams, that's for sure, because it will give us a huge push again if we go there and win it. But I still think there is a long, long way after to make all the ground up to win it. And I think Benjamin White spoke on Sky Sports and he kind of alluded to that as well. Big up Kai Havertz, because for me, you're starting tomorrow. Well, not that there's anyone else, but you're starting. Uh, he's been in great form. His overall performances have been really complete, both of his both for his country and us. Then his goal scoring threat, obviously, is a player who has been playing different positions and fulfilling different roles in a great way. We'll see how we'll use him this game. Amen, Gaffer, really and truly. Moving away from that, Arsene Wenger is confident we've actually learned our lessons from last season, people. He said, the great man said, I think so, yes. If Arsenal have what it takes, when asked if Arsenal have what it takes to go the way, the next game will be a little decider because we go to City. I love the fact that Wenger says... So we still, why not? City is always a difficult team to play and you was managing last time we won, isn't it? But not maybe as dominant as they were last year at the moment, but that can always come. They know how to do it. They have the knowledge and they've been, they've been there. Arsenal has the capacity, but they have to show they can do it now. I hope and I'm convinced they've learned from last year. Last year, the tension got to them and they dropped in the final sprint. Maybe this year, because they have two competitions to go for, they might be a bit more relaxed. And again, you know, like Arteta said, the sporting moment where, you know, it was kind of when things get worse, they get a lot a, a lot more worse. We're going to have to be able to, you know, take things in our stride in a positive and negative sense. But I think it's right there. I think he, I think he's bang on the money, if I'm honest. Shout out, Father Wenger. Arsenal have won none of their last eight Premier League trips to the Etihad, losing the last seven in a row. That's not nice and that has to end. De Bruyne has six goals and assisted two more in his last six games against us. You can imagine a lot of people having in the FPL points. Again, we it's a game where the end of the game might decide things. Arsenal's last two goals against Man City in the Premier League have been netted in the 86th minute, so it's going to be an interesting one. City have opened the scoring in the seventh minute in each of their last two Premier League games at the Etihad people. Man City, this should give us confidence. City have had, had four shots in the reverse fixture at the Emirates, the fewest shots a Pep Guardiola side has had in the top flight since April 2010. So maybe that's because there was no Kevin and some other factors in terms of their build-up play. Maybe Arteta stifled them. So let's see what's going on. And again, it's a very different ball game. But the fact of we've been winning away from home, we have 17 goals scored and conceded zero in our last three PL away games, should give us some confidence. City have scored in their last 47 seven consecutive Premier League home games since they lost to Crystal Palace 2 new in October 2021. Uh, uh, sorry, City are unbeaten in their last 25 Premier League games on home soil, losing none, drawing 
25 and winning 20 people. Havertz has scored in each of his last four Premier League matches and he also netted the winner against City in the Champions League final. And you can see the statistics there, man. This season for us, for goals scored, he's second, which is crazy. Expected goals, he's second. Touches in the opposition box, he's fourth. Jules one, he's second. Aerial Jules one, he's second. So that tells you what he brings to the table. Opta are not really giving us that high chance of winning the league, but, you know, it's not one in... It's not one in, in media houses, it's one on a football pitch. But Kyle Saka has been speaking, people, and he said, I know what it's like to be in their place, whatever this means. I see myself in them. At their age, I was the same. Now I want to be the hero of the new generation. You see my star, boy? 16 goals and 13 assists and 37 appearances across all comps. Making my debut with Arsenal, playing in the Champions League, being called up for England. Now there are other ambitions. I always have this determination to succeed. If you don't believe in yourself, you create problems for yourself. Of course, I had my issues, the usual ones you face in life, but I always try and still try to eliminate fear from my mind. Real Starboy stuff. Certain man score penalties and start trending on Twitter. Every day, there's a new peasant com compared to the guy. I'm going Jesus, Havart, Saka. Havart's over Eddie always. Half time, bring on Martinelli. I right, big up the ball boy for refusing to give kudos to ball. I hear that. V, appreciate that. Big up DG. Been watching for a while now. Glad to see some known faces on your channel. Keep up the good work. I'll be there. I appreciate that. A draw wouldn't be the worst result, but are you fearful of giving Liverpool the advantage again if they beat Brighton before our game? Naturally, yeah. But again, like the table, based on what Liverpool, Arsenal and obviously City are doing, just generally our title challenge thing works. It's always going to move around. Like we just have to handle our job. If we get, if we win, we shouldn't get excited and think we're running away from, with the league. Nor should we always look over our shoulder and fearful that people are going to overtake us. We know the dynamics. Like everything Gartera said, everything you've said, and we've gone over. Like we know the dynamics. We know our momentum's kind of been stifled by the international break. We know our record's done in that regard. We know we're only you know top on goal difference, and we know there's a lot of games to be played. So yeah, I mean naturally you'd imagine Liverpool are. Saying that sitting there and saying, you know what, boys, do your business. You've got the two two title rivals fighting that you know it'll be perfect for them. We just need to live to fight another day. As they say, if you can't win, don't lose. And I, I do think we have to win, but I also think more most importantly, we just need to leave with something. Allegedly, I I can't lie, I'm quite tired of this awesome and stuff personally, folks. But nonetheless, allegedly Arsenal win talks over 77 million Victor Osman deal with Nigerian to leave Napoli this summer. Um, apparently the Gunners are confident of it happening. We all know a striker is top on our priority list. Reports out of Italy are reporting that Arsenal have opened talks over a move for the Napoli hitman and are at the front of the queue to sign him, allegedly, people. So I have to see 77 million. That's a lot lower than what was previously stated for him. Uh, David Ornstein said that apparently the likes of Sesco and Jokeres are well thought of, as with Ferguson, but the price Brighton would want and the season he's had so far perhaps makes him less likely at the moment. I don't see it being an Osman or Tony. There'll be options too. So it all depends who you believe in that. American Gunner, appreciate you. Definitely would do that, my guy. Um, just seeing that message. What's this? Apparently Arsenal have reportedly gone cold on Osman and Tony, as suggested there. We've gone over what? My man said there. I'm sure I had I'm sure I had an article where apparently the sport the, the uh sporting director at Brentford spoke about it. Again, this pundit, whoever he is, is saying PSG and Chelsea are more likely to land Osman, who's also been linked with United and Arsenal. He apparently has said if a club is really interested in signing Osman and knows that Napoli can hardly pay a salary of 10 million, does it offer 110 or 120 million? This is why playing roles or negotiations is important. I believe that today Osman could be a, could be worth 100 million euros. Few teams can afford that, but these teams might need a striker. I'm talking about Chelsea, PSG, and there could be some other surprise teams. So read into that what you will. Allegedly, this article, which I don't believe it says, Jorginho's decided to leave Arsenal and sign for Barcelona. Could have begrudged him if he wanted to have one last experience before his career is done. We all know we're probably not going to get Everton's on Nana, but that article has kind of poured cold water on that. Apparently, Chelsea, Arsenal are in the race to sign Leeds United winger Somerville, who's doing quite well since they've been relegated and are fighting to get promoted, really and truly. I mean, in terms of being a young, quote-unquote, versatile winger, it makes sense. And apparently Aston Villa, Leipzig and Crystal Palace have all been linked. It could cost as much as 40 million. Now, 40 million with the greatest of respect to some of you at this moment in time, could that be spent somewhere else? I don't know, people. Personally, I would love Sesco or Jokeres to come to Arsenal. Shout yourself, Rally and S. Appreciate that. DG, don't worry, your stops for Kai is still here. <clears throat> oh, man. 
I hear it, man. Somerville's decent, very decent. But if you're Leeds and you're about to get promoted to the Premier League, of course, respectfully to Leeds, I would argue Aston Villa with their project, Leipzig, definitely, Arsenal, Chelsea. If these lot are coming for you, your head's going to get turned, really. But if Leeds do get promoted, they could sit there and say, you know what, Somerville, we'll give you a new contract. We'll reach an agreement. Just give us one more year. Let us get promote like get let us get promoted to the premier stay there and then you can f off and even that with Somerville you know if you make the step up to a big club there's going to be competition for places but are you necessarily at this moment in time obviously if Arteta's got a plan for you great but if you go to Chelsea there's a bunch of you got Raheem Sterling you've got Cole Palmer you don't know who else they're going to bring in are you going to play Aston Villa you even got people like the RB Crystal Palace you could play I see three in that Arsenal you're going to play ahead of Trossard Ahead of potentially Gabriel Jesus as an option there. Ahead of Bakayo Saka or Martinelli, I don't know, but he's a decent player. Apparently, again, Napoli's striker Victor Osman's days in Italy are numbered. Apparently, he's holding out for Paris Saint-Germain, which seems like nonsense. Kudus has spoken about Arsenal, Chelsea and Brighton interest. And he said, when, when replying to a journalist, all the clubs you mentioned, is true, they were in contact. But when West Ham came, it moved fast and I made my decision based on speaking to people around the club, their project and how they see me as a player. I mean, Kudus would have been lovely at Arsenal, wouldn't he? To be fair, for Quetta, but from, from the West Ham side, Bowen, Pequeta, and obviously Kudus would be great. And I would love Bruno Gomares from Newcastle, if I'm honest with you. Uh, we could be due for more money in the summer. Apparently, Napoli and Roma are interested in Pablo Marie people um, in, in the summer. Now, we obviously sold him, but you'd imagine we've got a sell-on clause. Inter Milan are to allegedly rival Arsenal for Fiorentina defender Kayonde, who is contracted until 2028 after signing an extension. And he has been linked with us before the Italian under-19 international. We've been linked with Messio people, you know, Estavio. Some of you would have been part of my Twitch watch-alongs where we watched the under-17s World Cup quality player, but he's going to cost a lot of money. Doesn't Somerville play just like Reese? I disagree. I actually like him, man. What position are we primarily looking at? Centre mid striker or winger? I don't have a clue because I don't work at the club, broski. But if I had to make a guess, I would say of equal importance, I think a striker and a central midfielder, that long-term Declan Rice partner. I'd even argue the centre mid might even be more important. So they're the priorities. Then I think when you look at it, depending on if, I say if on a half-hearted thing, but if and when Ramsdale leaves, you need a backup goalie. And I think if there's an opportunity to bring in a winger, I think the winger gets done. And I do, I, I wouldn't downplay another defender. I, I really wouldn't. You know, there was times this season, Cedric's been our only defender on the bench. You know, when everybody's fit, I love our defensive options and what they can bring. But Tommy Asu and Zinchenko pick up knocks. You know, Timber isn't injury prone, but he picked up a big knock. And you would like, occasionally the Salibas, the Gabriels, Benjamin Whites may be to be rested and things of that ilk. Chiesa has been linked with Arsenal, Chelsea, Newcastle and Liverpool. I mean, it's a bit boring with a 26-year-old. It's probably off the basis of his contract expires in 2025. So that's probably where you're at with that. Allegedly, Arsenal wanted to sign Cancelo from City last summer, but the club decided not to sell him. And he's been linked with us again. I mean... Why would City want to sell him to us now, man? You know, they didn't take our title challenge stuff seriously. Oh, there we go. Apparently, the technical director of Brentford has spoken about Ivan Tony, or just in general, he said, well, we've got to be honest and be open and honest with ourselves like we were last year with David Raya. We signed players and we're honest with them. They're honest with us that maybe the time may come for them to go on to bigger and better levels than ourselves. Ivan Tony is in a similar situation to what Raya was in. He's got aspirations to go and play at a higher level, which is fine, but it's got to be on Brentford's terms. Obviously, we've got to do it as a recruitment department, and it's particularly my role. I've just got to be ready to know that there may be a situation where we're looking to bring in someone in if Ivan leaves but there's also a situation where Ivan stays at the club and that's what we all want to be fair he could run down his contract we want Ivan to stay at the club and play Premier League football for Brentford for years to come but what a fantastic story you know we signed him from the third tier of English football and now he's in the English squad and hopefully he gets a few more appearances over the next couple of months and helps us as a nation go get that elusive trophy so yeah man I don't think we're going for Ivan Tony, I think he'd bring a lot to the table, but that's a myth. Apparently, Arsenal have no intention of selling Mika Berev. So, I mean, if we could give him the 21-year-old who's doing well in Austria, a contract extension of like three years, he goes and keeps doing what he's doing, then you can't rule out having a future at Arsenal. But you put yourself in the shop window. He does have a year left. And I don't know if he'll actually accept one that's at Arsenal if he's given a new deal. I'd, I, I, Based on the way he speaks, I think he wants to break in at, in, into the first team. But to a degree, you have to be kind of, not that it can't happen, but you have to be kind of real about your situation. Arsenal are not 
the Arsenal of a few years ago where more young players were getting opportunities, were trying to fight for leagues. You've got Kai Havertz who can play up front and he's ahead of you in the pecking order. You've got Trossard, you've got Gabriel Jesus. Whether Eddie and Ketty is here or not, that's another one. And there's rumours of bringing in another striker. So that's about five bodies. And again, forcing it because we haven't really seen it like that. But I'm sure a lot of us would like to see Martinelli one day be able to play through this. So he might say, you know what? I've got all these internationals and experienced footballers ahead of me. I've been on loan and I've been exposed to some first-team football. I kind of want to continue to do that. And maybe we're given an offer that we can't refuse because at the end of the day, this can help us get some money in people. For what it's worth, though, you know, big him up for eight goals in 11 games, people. We're not ready to depart with him permanently. So if he can progress to the first team, great. My assumption is he'll probably be sold. We've covered this before, people, but allegedly Arsenal were interested in re-signing Ismail Benassi, which I don't believe. Um, if I'm completely honest with you, he has a 50 million euro release clause and that runs until 2027. Maybe is a genuine option, but who knows? Obviously, shout out to my guy, Jordan, because in the theme of previewing Man City versus Arsenal, we did a video there. Uh, I had a bit of a rant about Anton Ferdinand and, and his comments in relation to Bukayo Saka there, as you can see. Uh, I did a tactical analysis of the City game for you. Lot. See, I'm single-handedly saving your weekends. And don't forget, we'll be doing a watch-along live from 3.45, I believe, because uh, we kick off at 4.30. So, yeah, man, the football is back with a bang. And hopefully, you know, we can continue to live a dream as Arsenal fans. Uh, big up you lot tuned in. If you haven't smashed the like button, make sure you've done such. I'm going to leave you lot to enjoy what's left of your Sunday. Saturday, better yet. Um, and I'll see you lot tomorrow, man. Big up you lot for smashing the like button, the Twitch gang, the talking points, the listening, all that good stuff. Check out the rest of the vids. Peace. <laughs> Like, easy, 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 easy.